POV, you're playing NBA 2K23, trying to pull off a sick blockbuster when you're hit with this message, huh? POV, you're reliving what the Nets sent Houston for James Harden and noticing the satisfying symmetry of how the picks are laid out. That's not an accident. See, both examples are cases of the NBA's Stepien rule, which prevents teams from being without a first round pick for consecutive years. Now, where did this rule come from and why is it necessary? Meet Ted Stepien, a Pennsylvanian born businessman who was heavily invested in professional softball and who would take ownership of the Cleveland Cavaliers in 1980. The Cavs franchise didn't have a strong track record when Ted took the reins, having made the playoffs just three times in their first 10 NBA seasons. But in just three seasons at the helm, Stepien made things so much worse. Now to his credit, Ted did have a plan when he took over the Cavs. I mean, it was a bad plan. It was a bad racist plan. He stated shortly after taking over the team in 1980, quote, no team should be all white and no team should be all black either. That's what bothers me about the NBA. You've got a situation here where blacks represent little more than 5% of the market, yet most teams are at least 75% black. Speaking of the business of running a team, this d head would say, quote, it's true basketball has become the city game and that means blacks play it more than whites and in many areas better than whites. But blacks don't buy tickets and they don't buy many of the products advertised on TV. I obviously don't mean to make light of these comments. The dude was racist. But even if you set aside the horrible human element of what he was saying, he was just flat out stupid. Stepien's attitude towards race was so pervasive that he literally self-imposed restrictions onto the Cavaliers of how they could build their roster. He desired a 50-50 split or something close to that in terms of race on his team. So stupid. It wasn't a saying back then, but uh, Ted fumbled the bag severely immediately. And that was all just a tip of the iceberg. Though a fellow by the name of Don Delaney was technically the Cavs GM, by all accounts, he was simply that in name only as Stepien was the true puppeteer. Believing he had a keen eye for basketball talent and wanting a quick turnaround for his newest investment, Stepien oversaw the Cavs trading away five consecutive first round picks from 1982 through 85. Here's a list of players that were acquired by Cleveland in those trades. Uh, Mike Bratz, Richard Washington, Jerome Whitehead, Jeff Houston, that's Jeff with a G by the way, Scott Wedman, you've never heard of these players, don't cap. And you're probably asking at this point, did any of those billion picks turn into something special for the team trading for them? In February 1980, the Cavs traded a future first round pick in 1982 along with Butch Lee to the Lakers in exchange for Don Ford and a 1980 first rounder. The Cavs would use that pick on Chad Kinch who would play just 28 games total in Cleveland while Don Ford averaged four points a game. Because Stepien was expeditiously running the Cavs into the ground, by 1982 they finished 15 and 67, the worst team in the NBA. The Lakers would win a coin flip with the San Diego Clippers of all teams, securing the first overall pick in 82, which they'd use to select James Worthy out of UNC. Three rings to all NBA teams, one finals MVP and a Hall of Fame career later, I think Cleveland lost that deal. Now to be fair, the Worthy trade was made before Stepien took control of the Cavs, so he's off the hook for that one. Although he's still on the hook for uh, sinking the Cavs franchise like the Titanic, which led to it being the first overall pick. While Worthy was the biggest blunder of the bunch, each of the other Cavs traded picks returned reasonable value. 16 year NBA vet Derek Harper was taken in 1983 with an original Cavs pick. Future all-star Detlef Schrempp in 1985. Roy Tarpley in 86, who'd have a short lived but productive NBA stint. And finally, the 1984 NBA draft. Don't worry, I'm not about to drop a bomb saying the Cavs could have drafted Michael Jordan. Their pick ended up being number four in 1984. MJ went number three, so it was close. But uh, Charles Barkley went five. Um, John Stockton, you ever heard of him? He went 16th in that draft. So anyways, in total, Ted Stepien traded four first round picks away in the span of just five months. On top of the pick that turned into Worthy I outlined earlier, Cleveland was to be without a first rounder for five consecutive years. In 1981, the NBA actually did step in and prevented the Cavs from trading any more picks without league approval. And following his sale of the team in 1983, they officially implemented the Stepien rule league-wide, a directive that remains in place to this day. Oh, and yeah, in case you're not closely following the timeline, old Teddy was in charge of the Cavaliers franchise for a grand total of three seasons. Three. He said a bunch of racist stuff, devastated the Cavs on-court product, ignited a league-wide rule change because of his stupidity. Oh, and also at one point tried to coax 44-year-old Wilt Chamberlain out of retirement. Yeah, big shocker that didn't work. He also threatened to move the Cavs to Toronto of all places. You know, after Cleveland fans tried to run him out of town, can't blame him. I'm not sure if Ted Stepien is the worst owner in NBA history. 
Probably not. But considering his career only lasted three years, for him to even be in that conversation, well, it's impressive. I mean, it's literally his only NBA-related accomplishment. It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing.